Good morning. My name is Bill Murray. I am the rector, the head of Holy Innocence Episcopal Church. Glad to be with you all this morning on the 10th of December, about two weeks from Christmas, obviously. Uh, well, two, I always think in those terms, mainly because Christmas Eve is when I end up doing a whole lot of my work, the Christmas Eve services and preparation for then Christmas Day, of course. Glad to be with you this morning. Today is the feast of Karl Barth. Um, most, uh, most average folks don't know who Karl Barth is, but he's a great theologian, one of the best in the church. So we'll be celebrating Karl Barth today. The readings then are Romans 7, 14 through 25. Romans 7, 14 through 25. The other is John chapter 8, 34 through 36. 8, 34 through 36. Um, and then the psalm is Psalm 76, 7 through 12. So we'll be celebrating Karl Barth today and talking a little about his witness. All is well here at the church. Things are chugging along. We're doing just fine um, as we sort of end the year. Uh, a gentle reminder to anybody who is, needs to pay their pledge, not just at this church, but at any church, please uh, pay your pledge. Help us finish up the year strong and then pledge for the next year for 2021. I don't know about y'all, but every time I hear some of those numbers, 2022, 21, it seems like we're making things up almost. They're made up numbers or I don't know, way too far in the future for me. Uh, at least the way I used to think. Good to be with you this morning. We'll do morning prayer, right to, like always. That can be found on page 75 of the Book of Common Prayer. That's where we'll begin uh, with right to morning prayer. Hopefully, um, many of you as parishioners uh, have received the bulletin. Um, hope that helps you. We certainly try to put all those together to give you as much information in advance as possible. But glad you are here this morning. Oh, something on the screen there. Um, it is just a little before nine o'clock. Glad to see you on. Hope you are all doing well. Again, today is morning prayer, right to beginning on page 75. And we will also then uh, be celebrating Karl Barth today, a uh, pastor and theologian who died in 1968. So actually a pretty recent saint today. And a very recent theologian. We'll begin here. I was looking to see if more folks would come on. Usually the algorithm takes a couple minutes to catch up to us and the fact that we're on. I'm sure more folks will come on as we go. So morning prayer begins on the front page of your service bulletin or again on page 75 of the Book of Common Prayer with the Advent Antiphon, the bottom of the Advent Antiphons there in the middle of the page. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. Turning to page 80, the Invitatory and Psalter. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Then we use, just below that, the response. <clears throat> uh, our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. We will then continue with the uh, Jubilate, which is Psalm 100, found on page 82 of the Book of Common Prayer, on page 2 of your service bulletin. Be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to <coughs> Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. I'm going to take a quick moment here and double check. My phone's being a little wonky. I'm not sure uh, everything is working quite, quite right. So I'm going to double check uh, looking at my computer, seeing what happens on that. 
Nope. There I am. Fair enough. All right. So we'll continue. Uh, we just did the Jubilate. Now we will do the psalm appointed for today. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 76, verses 7 through 12. 76, 7 through 12. What terror you inspire. Who can stand before you when you were angry? From heaven you pronounced judgment. The earth was afraid and still. When God rose up to judgment and to save all the oppressed of the earth, truly wrathful Edom will give you thanks, and the remnant of Hamath will keep your feasts. Make a vow to the Lord your God and keep it. Make a vow to the Lord your and let all around him bring gifts to him who is worthy to be feared. He breaks the spirit of princes and strikes terror into the kings of the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading is from Romans. Romans, uh, let's see, 7 verses 14 through 25. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of flesh, sold into slavery under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know not that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it, for I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, good evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of the God and my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh I am a slave to the law of sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our <clears throat> response to the epistle reading today will be the Song of Mary, the Magnificat, which can be found on page 3 of your service bulletin, or it can be found on page, I believe, 90, 91 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Magnificat, the Song of Mary, found on page 91 of the Book of Common Prayer, page 3 of your service bulletin. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to, to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We continue with a reading from the Gospel of John, John 8, 34 through 36. Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the gospel reading today will be the Song of Simeon, found on page 93 of the Book of Common Prayer, page 93. <clears throat> and it's also found on page 4 of your service bulletin. Sorry, I had to... Juggling papers this morning. Good to be with you. Song of Simeon, Luke 2, 29 through 32. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So today is the feast day of Karl Barth. Um, Karl Barth is one of the great theologians, certainly the, probably one of the greatest, if not the greatest, of the 20th century, uh, a German. And, uh, you know, he was a fascinating guy. He, <coughs> one of the great things that he was very concerned about was how closely the church chose to be allied with the state. And therefore, it became connected to the violence that the state was committing and the violence that the state perpetuated. He had big problems with that. Now, of course, he chose then to enact his conscience and protested. Uh, and the key, of course, is, is if you saw, heard at the beginning, he died in 1968. The protests were against the rise of social, Nazi socialism and the Nazi party in Germany. He protested and protested and uh, paid a price for that. He wasn't killed, but he was fired from his job and separated. But here's the thing that we all forget and is never really taught in your history books. The church in Germany, both Catholic and Lutheran, and those are the two main branches in Germany at that time and still today, uh, they embraced Hitler. They embraced the ideology of the Nazi party, and Karl Barth was one of the few, along with Dietrich Bonhoeffer and a handful of others, who protested that alliance. And that alliance runs deep. There's a straight line from the theology of Martin Luther to the death camps of Auschwitz. It's not a fun line, and it's not one that we like to talk about, but the anti-Semitism that was preached from the pulpits are absolutely what enabled the anti-Semitism that led to the death camps. So much so that people don't realize that the belt buckle for Nazis actually had a saying on it that said, Gott mit, <coughs> Gott mit uns, or God with us. It's taken from the prophecy of the angel to Mary, you will name him Emmanuel, God with us. And every German soldier, every Nazi soldier almost, that went into battle had on their belt buckle, Gott mit uns, God is with us. It is that toxic connection of faith and nationalism that Karl Barth decried and one that we would do well to remember today. That is, often enough, it is not our faith that always makes the worst choices, but we enable others to make the choices. As Paul said in the readings from Roman today, we have the right things in our head, but we keep doing the things we know we're not supposed to do. On this day, as we remember Karl Barth and his theology, and his theology is super clear. It's one of my favorite. Actually, it probably is my absolute favorite theology. It's that God is in charge. And if there is any theology that has anything other than God is in charge, then it's not accurate anymore. That God is the one animating us. God is the one driving us. God is the one helping us. God is the one loving us. Not the state, not the politics, not even the church at times, but God. If God's not the center, then we're off course. So, as we remember Karl Barth, I think we do well to remember that the church and state are separate and different. God's goals are not the goals of man. And even more, we should be careful and wary of those places we end up that says God has ordained any group to be in charge. 
We'll continue with the Apostles' Creed, which can be found on page 96 of the Book of Common Prayer or on page 5. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages B, which can be found on page 98 of the Book of Common Prayer, or on page 5 of your service bulletin. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. <clears throat> have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. The Collect for Karl Barth today. Almighty God's source of justice beyond human knowledge, we thank you for inspiring Karl Barth to resist tyranny and exalt your saving grace, without which we cannot apprehend your will. Teach us, like him, to live by faith, and even in chaotic and perilous times, to perceive the light of your eternal glory. Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God throughout all ages. Amen. A collect for peace today. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, and all assaults of our enemies that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for our world today, praying especially for nations, that they might hear the word of God and enact policies that care for the poor and the hungry and the lost, that they might find and pursue avenues of peace over war, that they might be agents of good in this world instead of agents of division, hatred, or power. Turning to the general thanksgiving, which can be found on page 101 or on page 7 of your service bulletin. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray. Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts 
we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. I pray you have a good day, my friends, and we will see you soon. God bless.